Well, when I heard that there was a new Conan coming out, I wondered who could actually take the place of the great Arnold Schwarzenegger in the original Conan and the sequel Conan the Destroyer. And I found out it was somebody named Jason Momoa. <laughs> he's been in Baywatch, North Shore, and he's currently in the uh, hit series Game of Thrones. Still doesn't ring a bell? Well, anyway, Jason Momoa has to step into Arnold Schwarzenegger's sandals and play the muscle-bound Conan. And this can't be any easy task for any actor. So I thought, what roles, iconic roles, have been tough to step into and who has succeeded and who hasn't. And to go through these roles with me is my good friend here, Mike Ladarsik, a true movie fan. So, Mike, can you think of any situations that were iconic roles where people stepped in and whether they were successful or not? Well, I think first off, the one role that you kind of have to mention is the role of James Bond, made famous by Sean Connery in 1962's Dr. No. Well, I'm sure most people automatically think of Sean Connery because he was the first and most people would admit the best who played the part. Um, personally, I think he's the best of all the James Bonds. Um, I also really like Timothy Dalton, who a lot of people seem to think was awful in the role. I think he was very good. I think he, he embodied the character better than Roger Moore, who's not one of my favorites. Um, and I think Daniel Craig right now, I think he's the best since Connery. I think he captures the part better than any of the other recent ones, including Pierce Brosnan. Uh, a choice that I had was the original Ocean's Eleven. Now, before the movie came out, um, people remember this, of course, being a Rat Pack movie with Sammy and Dino and Joey Bishop and that whole right. crew. And uh, they said nobody's going to be able to fill Sinatra's shoes. And I think Clooney did a pretty good job. He made three different Ocean's Eleven films. In the first one, he sort of charms us. He's cool. He's got that swagger. Uh, I think it seems like him and all well, the rest of the cast are having a lot of fun. It seems like they're having a ball. And they just, you know, he, he kind of makes the role his own. Uh, my next choice is Norman Bates, who was first played by Anthony Perkins in Alfred Hitchcock's 1960 classic, Psycho, and who was followed by Vince Vaughn in the Gus Van Zandt ill-advised shot-for-shot remake in 1998. You didn't like that one, huh? Uh, no, I saw it once and I never need to see it again. The movie stinks and he's no good, or well, he's no good I, he's in the movie? He's good, but he just, he doesn't really bring anything new to the role. He's not good, he's not bad, he's just, mm -hmm. he just is. My next choice is the Bay Ray role in King Kong. Um, Fay Ray's name is synonymous with King Kong, even though she had quite a career, both, uh, mostly before King Kong, you know, as a silent movie actress. And in the two remakes, you had Jessica Lang, not playing the same character, playing somebody named Dwan, not Dawn, uh, and Naomi Watts in the Peter Jackson uh, remake of it. The whole King Kong is Fay Ray all along. I mean, I don't think either of these two, I mean, either of these two actresses, I don't think can compare to her. Jessica Lange is actually pretty awful in the 76 remake with Jeff Bridges. It's not her fault. I mean, she didn't really have all that much acting experience at the time. And as we all know, she did definitely improve in the later years. It's funny, if you would take the three actresses and not know anything about their career and pick the one that would win two Oscars, <laughs> I don't think you would have picked Jessica, Jessica Lange. Lange. Rooster Cogburn, who was played by John Wayne in 1969's Oscar-winning True Grit, and that was followed by Jeff Bridges, who played the same part in the Coen Brothers remake in 2010. The only problem I have with this performance is I just feel he tends to mumble a little too much his lines. In fact, a few times I had to hit the rewind button to figure out what it was he had just said he switched the eye patch whereas John Wayne wore the eye patch on the left side of his face Jeff Bridges wears it on the right side of his face <laughs> okay my next choice is Tarzan and Jane now the one that a lot of people especially an older generation will remember is Johnny Weissmore the Olympic swimmer and Marino Sullivan as Jane and since then the whole premise has been done uh, over and over again. Gordon Scott uh, has, has done it. Casper Van Diem, uh, Miles O'Keefe. Just, just a lot of people have played Tarzan. And Jane has been played by Jane March, uh, by Brenda Joyce, by Joanna Barnes. And I always go back to the original here. I don't think many people can step into Tarzan's 
bare feet, although I think Gar Gordon Scott wore sandals. <laughs> My father used to point that out. There's the Tarzan with sandals. Um, and, and I don't think anybody will ever be as great as them. Well, I grew up with the Johnny Weissmuller Tarzans. I used to watch them every afternoon on television Saturdays. And, and uh, he's obviously my favorite and always will be. But I think Christopher Lambert did a good job in Grace Stoke, The Legend of Tarzan, Lord of the Apes. I think it's much more faithful to the original Edgar Rice Burroughs novel than any of the previous films. Uh, my next choice is Willy Wonka, who was first played by Gene Wilder in 1971's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And he was followed by Johnny Depp in the Tim Burton remake in 2005, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And you prefer I Wilder? I much prefer Gene Wilder. I think he, uh, his, I think it's what the role that he's more associated with than any other role that he ever played, except maybe for Young Frankenstein. Um, as for Johnny Depp's performance, I can't say I, I, I like it at all. Uh, I like the movie, and the movie's really well done. Uh, all the other actors are great, but. Uh, I just don't care for his performance. I just don't understand what he's trying to do, and it seems like he's. It seems like he doesn't know what he's trying to do with the character either. Well, I actually happen to prefer the remake in this case to the original. And I think it's original, I think it's funny, I think it's psychedelic in its own little way. And I think Depp is fantastic. In, really? In it. Right. Uh, yeah, sometimes I feel like he's impersonating <laughs> Michael Jackson. He's got the Maybe, glove. Right. And he seems gloves. Like, you know, the way he talks to the kids is a little creepy. Uh, but I just I just think he nailed the part. Really? I, 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 I totally disagree with that, unfortunately. If you've ever read Roald Dahl's original book, you'll see that Gene Wilder's interpretation is much closer to the book, whereas Johnny Depp seems to be playing the character some sort of psychotic, antisocial, yes. child-hating psycho. Yes, there's a lot of psychology behind the performance, and I think right. that adds a lot of neurosis. certain layers right. to it, makes it more interesting and a little more creepy. Right, definitely creepy. But you still prefer the old one, huh? Yes. Okay, well, I think most people do, but they're wrong, too. Anyway, <laughs> um, my last choice is Sabrina. The original starred Audrey Hepburn as the lead character and also featured Humphrey Bogart and William Holden as two brothers who both have a fondness for the daughter of a limo driver. The remake starred Julia Orman in the part that Hepburn took and also featured Harrison Ford in the Bogart role and Greg Kinnear in the William Holden part as the younger brother. And Julia Orman sort of brings a, a European flair to the part, but she doesn't quite get to uh, Audrey Hepburn's status in it. Um, and I just prefer Audrey because she's just a classic actress, a classic beauty. And uh, Julia's nothing to sneeze at either, but, um, you know, Audrey Hepburn all the way. So, Mike, what's your next choice? Uh, my next choice is Clarice Starling, who was first played by Jodie Foster in the 1991 Academy Award winner, Silence of the Lambs. And ten years later, the part was taken over by Julianne Moore in the disappointing follow-up Hannibal part. So how does Julianne uh, Moore compare to Jodie? Well, she, she does an all right job. I think she does a, a good job at impersonating the accent that Foster uses in Silence of the Lambs and also some of her mannerisms and she gives a good performance it's just I think the material is what's really weak and she really doesn't have much to work with. I, I think you know when you think of that role you know Jodie Foster you sort of it becomes a trivia question who else played it almost, <laughs> right right even though Julianne Moore is a, a fine good actress. actress sure. uh, so yeah you have to I think you have to go with Jodie Foster. Definitely. Because, you know, she's as famous as Anthony Hopkins almost, who also won the Oscar. So those are the choices for these uh, iconic roles that have been recast. Some work, work uh, such as Johnny Depp, <laughs> and some don't. We agree to disagree. Yeah, uh, and uh, if you have any choices, let us know. And this is Collecting Movie Classics with Movie Up.